everybody? How's everybody this morning? This cold morning. <laughs> Can y'all believe that? Thought we was through with this, huh? No, not through with it. All right. Are you glad to be here? Yeah. All right. Let's sing this morning. Through you the blind will see. Through you the mute will sing. Through you the dead will rise, through you our hearts will praise, through you the darkness flees, through you my heart screams, I am free, yes I am free, come on sing this with me, I am free to run, I am free. blind will see through you the mute will sing through you the dead will rise through you our hearts will pray through you the darkness flees through you our hearts screams I am free yeah come on I am free
be seated. Please watch our screen. Welcome to Bayou Blue Assembly. Listen closely to hear about our upcoming events. Join us today at Sicily's as they host a give back night to help us raise money for our basketball court. If you're looking to get involved here at Bayou Blue and start serving in ministry, we'll be having our guardian training class today at 4.30 p.m. in the Kids Church. Come and learn how you can fill a hole. Due to some other events going on, we will not be having our prayer room this Saturday. We are so excited for our upcoming Missions Popcorn Fundraiser starting this April. All through the month of April, you can find a great kit to order a bag. Join us for our BGMC Missionary Challenge. Who's ready to go to camp? Join us for our Kids Camp Meeting Sunday, April 2nd at 5 p.m. in the Kids Church. Secure your child's spot today for only $25. Our youth will also be having their camp meeting Wednesday, April 5th from 6 to 6.30 p.m. Come to the meeting and hear about the amazing opportunity that camp provides for your students. Have you ever felt like something's missing? That's because it is. There are 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks in a year, and an average of 70 years in a lifetime. And the great thing about all this time is it only takes a few hours in a week to change lives. Have you ever felt like something's missing? Well, that's because it is. It's you. We believe in loving God, loving people, and reaching the lost. We believe in preparing hearts to be changed by the presence of God. We believe in creating space for students to encounter God and discipling them from knowledge to belief. We believe in teaching kids to know God, love God, and share God. We believe in equipping the called to go and make disciples. We believe in teaching young people the Word of God. We believe in creating a safe place for the entire family. We believe. 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 We believe in you. Will you fill the hole? to make, make us whole. whole. I hope that you have prayed about it and where to fill that hole. You know you can fill out a little donut and when you fill it out and turn it in you get some little donut holes. Yay! <laughs> we do have a guest speaker today and we're so excited have Brother Korea, right? Yes. Korea, I got it. <laughs> so exciting. You, he is from Kenya and um, just very excited to have him with us and you're going to enjoy his message. Amazing word of God today. And so if you would like to bless him, just um, to bless his ministry, just fill out, a car, fill out the envelope, put it on there and put it in our offering and our tithe baskets back there. Also, we want to give you a chance. Um, one year ago, last Friday, was when our sweet little Megan Quick passed away. And um, we, as a church, have a Megan Quick scholarship fund. So if you would like to give toward that, this is the time of year that you can do that. And this helps um, to award some kids to go to camp because Megan loved camp and she was preparing for camp. She wanted to go to camp so bad. And um, so we have this opportunity where we can sponsor some children through this Megan Quick Scholarship. So if you would like to give towards that, you can just fill it out, put it in the envelope and put it up back there in the boxes. All right. So why don't you stand right now? 
turn around and greet someone. Remember to give your tithe and offerings, and you can give online or give right now in those boxes.
pray that you will abide right here with us today. We welcome you here in this place, Holy Spirit. And we say, Father, Father, we will follow you. Wherever you lead us, we will follow you. It's my prayer. I hope it's your prayer today.
Father, you deserve all the glory and the honor and the praise. We give it to you right now. Ooh, yes, we do. You deserve the glory. As we praise your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. your hearts to the Lord right now in your own way just remember his greatness in your life some of you he saved you from, from deep sin and wickedness some of you he saved you from malaise but either way he saved you he brought you up he brought you from death into life oh church give him praise in your way glory to your name Jesus Thank you for giving me breath in my lungs. I'm happy to give it back to you. Yes, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. 
You may be seated once again. Thank you for coming to buy your blue assembly of God where we love Jesus. Yes. Well, it is my honor to introduce our guest speaker today. As you well know, uh, we are a church that believes in missions. We are a church that underwrites missions. We are a church that goes on missions. And uh, I love being a part of this church. I love representing these folks who have given into our ministry over the years, the decades abroad. And one of those countries that we spend a lot of time in is Kenya. Matter of fact, some of our ladies are heading out Monday. Ooh, ooh, hey! Going to Kenya, doing some women's conferences and other ministries. I know tonight we're going to cover you in prayer. And so uh, you don't want to miss the opportunity to, to bless those that go in your name. Yeah, right? Under the leadership of Jesus. But in the country of Kenya, there is a leadership structure just like in our country. We have a general superintendent over all of the United States. We have a general treasurer over all of the United States. Well, we have the auspicious honor of having the general treasurer for all of the nation of Kenya in this pulpit today. So I introduce my friend, Bishop Stephen Correa. Come on, Pastor. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor Mike, I'm so grateful, together with your wife, uh, because the one actor who made me to come here, I'm so thrilled by what I've tasted. And I want us to thank God for the pastor of this church and his wife. And uh, she has a wonderful voice, great voice. And, uh, and I want to say this, uh, I have enjoyed, I've tasted something that I've never tasted in my life. In the few days I've been here, I've gone to some place I never imagined that I would be there. Like yesterday went to the, you call it swamp? swamp? Yeah, I had no idea where we, we, we were going. And, uh, and at one point it was so fearful. And I was thinking, are we going to make it? And, uh, but thanks to God that uh, uh, the privilege has been there. Uh, before I bring God's word, on behalf of the General Superintendent of the Kenya Assemblies of God, the National Executive, the Presbyters, the Pastors, and the family of KAG, uh, I want to bring greetings uh, from General Superintendent who wrote me in the morning just to say hi to you, and also to my wife, from my wife, whom we serve together. Uh, we are so grateful. I, I didn't know until I came here what this church means to Kenya Assemblies of God. I was not aware. I was not, I had no idea. But after arriving here, talking with uh, Pastor Mike and uh, his wife, and the pastor, the wife, and I met quite a number of people who have visited Kenya, who have been in Kenya, and uh, particularly in the area of Maasai. And I want to report to you, in Kenya, within the Assemblies of God, uh, there is an area that's so vibrant with the gospel, is open to the gospel, and even the governor of that area cannot get into leadership without the blessing of Kenya Assemblies of God. And uh, there are two Akure counties, uh, Mike, uh, Mike knows that. There is the, the Narok district region, and there is uh, Kajiando County. Those governors cannot be elected without the blessing of the members of the Assemblies of God, who are the Maasai people, and the, the, the movement that is behind Maasai people are right here. We want to honor Mike and you guys and uh, the, the, the dad and mom who have served for many, many years uh, there. And there is a, 
a great revival in that place. And therefore, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your prayers, Pastor. We are so honored. And even allowing me to share in this pulpit, I take it as a, as a blessing. Amen. I am also a pastor, a lead pastor in a church we call Waithaka Mission Center. Uh, Waithaka is the name of, a, of an area. Uh, then we call it Mission Center. And I would want to bring to us God's one this morning. I hope that my accent will be okay. Um, praise the Lord. English is not my first language. I speak three languages, fluent. I learned how to speak English, and, uh, and I've tried. I mean, I've tried. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I want to bring God's word, and uh, I want to share with us about igniting our passion for God. Igniting our passion for God, and the text, the guiding text of my message is from 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56 to 60, and we are learning from the, the, the wonderful prayer of King Solomon. King Solomon was a great man of God. He was a great writer, man of wisdom. He had many wives, of course, but one of the things that is so profound in his life was that he was a man of prayer. And uh, there are three major prayers he made that are repeated many times. You know, uh, and this prayer is part, actually, of the dedication of the temple. And I just chose those few words uh, for us to learn. And I want to encourage us that at the end of the sermon, expect a miracle from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Can we go to that passage? I want to read. I'm reading from NIV translation. And verse 56 says, Praise be to the Lord. He has given rest to his people Israel just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through the servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us nor forsake us. May he turn our hearts to him so that we may walk in obedience to him and keep the commands, the decrees, the laws he gave to our ancestors. And may these ones of mine, which I have prayed before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, and he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel according to each day's need. And that so that the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. Can we pray? Our Heavenly Father, I pray, use me as a vessel in your hands, O God. As I share this word, I pray that it will rekindle we will revive our passion for you. That God will be serving you not as a duty, but Lord, as, a, as, as an assignment that you have given to us, Lord. I ask of your blessings, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me start by trying to explain what we mean by igniting our passion for God. Now, passion means... To re, I mean, um, ignition or igniting means to rekindle or to re relight or to revive our great love for God. That when we do the things of God, prayer, fellowship, fasting, giving, missions, evangelism, we don't do it as a duty, but as a service unto the Lord. Yeah. We are not just doing it as a leap service, but we are doing it from our hearts because that's what the Bible requires. That whatever that we do, we do it from our hearts. Amen. And I pray that the Lord is going to challenge us today. I love the ones of David in Psalms 42 verse 2 where he said, My soul, that's for God. For the living God, when can I go 
and meet with my God. It is a desire, it's a passion, it's a longing. He creates something in his heart and he's saying, I need God. And I pray that through this message, God is going to create hunger, thirst for him in the name of Jesus. And I want to say that our passion for prayer, Bible study, fellowship, evangelism, missions, I mean, uh, compassion should never be done out of duty, but out of love for God. You are doing it for the love of God. Amen. Now, allow me to just share five thoughts from the passage that we have just read that can help us rekindle, can help us ignite our passion for God in the name of Jesus. Number one, I'm looking at verse 56. And in verse 56, I'm drawing a point that we ought to praise God for the past victories. If you want to revive your faith, if you want to revive your passion for God, if you want to revive your life for him, we should not forget what he has done in the past. In Psalms 103 verse 1, the Bible says, forget not his benefits. God spoke to the people of Israel and he told them when you get there and you eat and you drink and you enjoy that there, your heart will forget and you become proud. And you shall forget the Lord who has brought you from, his, from the place where he brought you from. And therefore, in his passionate prayer, King Solomon comes in this verse and he says, Praise be to the Lord who has given us rest, Sabbath, rest from worries of this world, rest from battles, rest from sicknesses, rest from all struggles that we all face. He has given us rest. Because it is only God who can give us the true rest. St. Augustine once said that man is restless until he finds rest in God. True rest is not found from money. Wealth is good, money is good, fame is good, position is good. All the things that we have in this world are good, but they cannot give us true rest. True rest can only come from the Lord. And that's what he is saying. We need to thank God. We need to be men and women of gratitude that we look back and say, this is where the Lord has brought us from. The Lord has done this. He has given his people rest. And not just that, he says, not one word has failed. God has not failed. He has been faithful. Yes, we have gone through turbulent moments. I know for the last three years we have gone through fires, if I can say so. We have gone through COVID. At one point, me and my wife, we got COVID and we thought we were going to go to that other place we always think about. I was away from the church for a whole month. We could not move out of this place in the, in the, in the house. And it was so terrible. We buried pastors. We buried members. We lost people that were so good. We lost members of our church. People moved from one place. They were actually place. We, they lost jobs. They lost businesses. There are so many things. And almost when it was going over, then the drought hit. That part of Africa, the Horn of Africa, part of the northern part of Af uh, Kenya and Eritrea, Somalia, has experienced drought that has never happened for the last 50 years. 40 million people are faced with starvation. People have died. Animals have died. Carol have died. You know, it's a sense of hopelessness. You feel like, actually, it is the end of the world. I mean, there are so many things that you have gone through, brethren. We have severe drought all over the world. I also learned just the other day that here you experience Hurricane Katrina. I think I'm just learning some of the words. And you went through a lot of challenges. I was here, and I, I mean, when I came here, on, was it on Thursday, and I met, we had a dinner here, and, and, and what the, the guys were doing, trying to help. And I realized our problems are all over. Yeah. Problems are all over. 
Uh, and, and not just that, people lost jobs and all those many things. But one thing that we need to thank God for is that in the midst of all these things, God has been faithful. God has been so good. God has been so good to us. His love endures forever. His faithfulness has never ended. He is always with us. And therefore, we ought to develop a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving. You need to list down all the things that the Lord has done to you, not just as a nation, not just as an area, not just as a church, but you as a person. You need to reflect and look back and see what the Lord has done in your life. And you just thank God. Remember there was a time you didn't have a job. Remember there was a time you didn't have a, a house. You didn't have whatever. But the Lord has been so gracious. Lest you forget and you become proud. And then the destruction will come. You know when you develop a heart of thanksgiving, gratitude, that humbles you. It's the killer number one of pride. When you look back to those photos, when you started the ministry for us who are in the ministry, the humble background. I passed through where your former church was, and I said, yes, if this is where you are, and now you are here, you have a history to tell. Each one of us has a history. There is a place where God brought us from. Hallelujah. Personally, I never dreamt that I would ever come here. In, in the U.S., I would never go to any place. I was brought up, brought up in a poor family. And here I am, by God's grace, by God's love. Now, if I live for God, I'm living God for what? He has done so much for me that even if at the end of the day, I am told there is no heaven, I think what I've gone through is enough. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Can you imagine, for example, we always think about heaven and we forget so many things that the, God, the Lord has helped us. He has moved us from one glory to, the, to another glory. From one level to another level. And that talks about his faithfulness. In the book of Joshua 21 verse 45, the Bible says, Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came to true. And the Bible is true. The word of God speaks the truth. People failed God, but God never failed them. Whatever he told the, the uh, people of Israel, Moses and the rest, he fulfilled all the promises. Hallelujah. And even today, my brothers and sisters, God is so faithful. God is so gracious. God is so good. You know, when you reflect about the past things, you know what happens? It gives you courage to face the current and future, future giants. I remember David speaking these words. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the heart of this Philistine. He has done it in the past. He is going to do it now, and he is going to do it even tomorrow. And therefore, this is the same, same God. The Bible says he was he's the same yesterday, today, and even in the future. The same, same God. The same, same God who was with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob is the same, same God. Hallelujah. He has been so faithful. In fact, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 and 4, the Bible talks about his faithfulness. For all these 40 years, your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not blister or even soil. In other words, for the 40 years, God was so faithful to the people of Israel. And he is the same. He has done the same to us. In the book of... Um, Psalms 107, verse 28 to verse number 30. I want to quote just one section where the Bible says that they cried out to the Lord in the, in the trouble, in the time of trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. We have gone through turbulent moments, harsh times, difficult moments, but as we look back and we are here today, 
We are just looking about the faithfulness of God. I want to encourage you today, develop a heart of gratitude. Develop a heart of thanksgiving. Think about what the Lord has done to you, to your family, to your life. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Because that will humble you. That will kill pride in us. Because when you forget what the Lord has done in the past, therefore we, we cannot face the future with confidence. But the Lord has been so gracious to us. Now, he moves on in verse 57 and, and shares about something that is very, very important. And that is the presence of God. That we need to desire the presence of God in all our lives. And this is what King Solomon prays. He says, may the Lord our God be with us. In Hebrew, Yahweh Elohenu Imanu. As he was with our ancestors, may he never leave us nor forsake us. We are praying. He is making a passionate prayer. He is saying, may the Lord our God be with us. And I pray even this morning, this afternoon, I think, this afternoon, may the presence of God be with us. May the Holy Spirit be with us. May the grace of God be with us. You know, brethren, that makes all the difference. That makes all the difference. And he is saying, may he never leave us nor forsake us. And you can quote, actually, you look at what uh, King Solomon is praying. It's what God has promised the people of Israel. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is repeating the same, same prayer. May the Lord never leave us nor forsake us. And that was the cry of Moses. He was crying for the presence of God. And he says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. In verse 15 of chapter 33 of Exodus, and he said to him, if your presence will not go with us or with me, do not bring us up from here. In other words, you're not going to move from here without your presence. Brethren, we need God's presence. We need God's presence. That's what he promised the, uh, the people of Israel. And Joshua, as a young leader, as he was taking over the leadership of Israel, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 5 and 9, the Bible says, I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Push on. Move on. Don't give up. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Because the Lord will be with you. He has promised at every level of our lives, he will never leave us. He will always walk with us. And that's the promise of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to the name of Jesus. When David sinned against God, one of the cry of his heart, he says in Psalms 51 verse 11, do not cast me from your presence or take away or take your Holy Spirit from me. Don't remove me. Don't cast me away from your presence. Because if you do that, I am done. I am finished. I'm longing to see that I remain in your presence. In the, in the life of Jesus, as he was preparing to leave the, 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 the children, um, the disciples, in John, John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17, the Bible says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, another counselor, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you, my disciples, hallelujah, for he, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. And there are two prepositions that are used in this passage here. He shall be with you and he shall be in you. In other words, you shall feel the presence of God 
the mighty works of God, the power of God, the presence of God. Hallelujah. But also, he shall also be in you. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. What a privilege, brothers and sisters, that God has chosen us as a holy nation, holy generation, people of God, people who are possessed by God, that he allows his spirit to dwell in us. It's a great privilege, brothers and sisters, that he says, the world will not know, will not know him, but you shall know him because he shall live in you and he shall be with you. And every aspect of our lives, the Holy Spirit is always with us. And it's my prayer that we desire more of the Holy Spirit. In every section of our lives, in every segment of our lives, we may desire the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's what the promise of the Father. He said that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is our, he is our, you know, our guide. He is the one who heals us. And when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, not just we speak in tongues, we bear the fruit of the Spirit, but we also experience miracles, gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. That even today, those gifts are still there. They are still in operation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are still in operation. When you have the courage and the presence of the Holy Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit in every aspect of your life. When you are discouraged, you need the Holy Spirit. When you are disappointed, you need the Holy Spirit. I love David when he found what had happened. And he said, and I, and I, I encourage myself in the Lord. It is only in the Lord that you can find rest. It's only in the Lord that you can find comfort. It's only in the Lord that you can find whatever that we need. The power of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, King David is praying, may the Lord our God be with us. Is it not the same, same prayer that we should pray even this day? That let the presence of the Holy Spirit come on me. Hallelujah. When you wake up in the morning, the very first thing that you take before you take iced tea, because I'm not used to iced tea, by the way. Hallelujah. I've never taken iced tea or iced cock or whatever. But in my imagine, starting the day with the Lord, starting the day with the Holy Spirit, starting the day with the Lord, with the King of Kings, with the Lord of Lords, because the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life makes all the difference. And if the Lord is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Who can be against us if the Lord is with us? Praise be to the name of Jesus. And then he moves in verse 58. And he talks about obedience. Hallelujah. And he says, May he turn our hearts to him. To walk in obedience to him and keep the commands, decrees, and the laws he, he gave to our ancestors. May the Lord turn our hearts. It is a striking phrase in this passage. May the Lord turn our hearts to him. Because many times, brothers and sisters, our hearts are driven away from the presence of God. The worries of this world, the pleasures of this world, the things of this world, all the things that we pass through, at times they drive us away from the presence of God. We are living in a very, very difficult time. Difficult, difficult time where wickedness thrives in every place. Where the level of wickedness cannot even be imagined. It's more than actually Sodom and Gomorrah. And I was telling Pastor Mike, he told, I mean, his wife, they took me downtown. And I think that we passed through there. Besides seeing the wonders of this wonderful place, but we also went through a street of doom. A street that is like Sodom and Gomorrah. And I said, if this is what it means 
then this, how this country is in trouble. Because if this can happen here, and God is watching from heaven, but do you know what? It's not unique. What happens in the U.S. comes to Kenya, comes to Africa. The things that you see around is the same, same things. It is a shock that some of the things that we embrace, that I embrace even in the church in this generation, some of the things are abomination. Some of the things are wicked, but we call them it. We are living in a time when truth is relative. It does not mean it. It's just the other thing. But King Solomon is praying, may he turn our hearts to him. May the Lord God of heaven turn our hearts to him. Because when he turns our hearts to him, then we shall walk in obedience to him. And then we shall obey his word. Because there are two things that are very, very important in our lives. That we be turned to him and obey him. And not just obeying him, but also obeying his word. Because obeying God and obeying his word are two different things. You could love God, but you don't obey his word, his commands. There are people who go to church, yes, which is okay. You love God. But the question and the challenge that King Solomon is giving to us today is, do you obey his word? And therefore, it's not just about God. It's about also obeying his word. In the book of Psalms, one of my favorite Psalms in the entire book of Psalms is Psalms 128. I don't have time to quote that. But verse 1 and 2 is key. It's actually the guy text is the main message of that whole chapter. And it talks about the people who fear God and who walk in his ways. You are talking about loving God and walking in his ways. And then it follows. Those people are blessed. Praise be to the name of Jesus. You know, you attract God's anointing, God's blessing, when you obey him and you obey his word. And that is what he is praying. As I was praying about this message, I came across... Joshua chapter 24, verse 31, and I'm calling it the Joshua generation. The Joshua who lived with Moses. And this is what the Bible says. Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. That Joshua lived in a time he obeyed God he saw miracles and wonders. You know, he was with Moses. He experienced every single uh, miracle in his life. And the Bible says, when he was giving the baton to the elders, they outlived him. They outlived his faith. His faith outlived him. In other words, the generation that was born by Joshua, the immediate elders, continued with the, with, the, with the experiences. But a shocking verse follows in Judges chapter 2, verse 10. And I'm calling it the Judges generation. In Judges chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, after that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israelites. And it's my humble prayer that today, the people that we are going to hand over the baton, the spiritual baton, will be men and women of God. It is my prayer that even within the assemblies of God, we have known and we have, God has blessed the assemblies of God. It's the largest Pentecostal movement in the world. The largest church in the world belongs to the assemblies of God. I used to be in South Korea when I was doing my graduate studies. And I used to go there and I see marvelous and wonderful things that are happening. Brethren, we are blessed. Why are we blessed? It's because we embraced the power of the Holy Spirit. We embrace the, the fire of mission. And it's my prayer, even within our family, that that fire will be kept burning. That fire of the Holy Spirit uh, that even as we hand over to the next generation, the young people that we are bringing up, they will have the same, same fire. I pray. I always pray in our local church, Waidaka Mission, 
And I cry within myself because the generation we, are, we have is different. We were not brought up the same way. Personally, I, 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 I mean, my children and myself are different. I, I didn't wear a pair of shoes until I was in high school. For eight years, I went to school barefoot. I used to walk. I used to struggle. My children are not like that. Both spiritually, because of maybe those struggles and hardships and all that, they made me so hard to pray, to fast, and to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. I always pray for my children. Praise be to the name of Jesus. That even when they have the shoes, they have the clothing, they have the school fees, they will still love the Lord. It's my prayer. It's my prayer today, my brothers and sisters, that the next generation will be a generation that knows God. We are going to raise up a people that fear the Lord. Because if you are going, we are not going to give birth to people that fear the Lord. It will just be like the time of the judges. And the Bible says, and another generation came that knew not God. People who did not experience the power of God. It's my cry in the name of the Lord Jesus. I love the Assemblies of God family because even the globally, what we are right now struggling and we are striving to arrive at is the next generation. We are praying for the next generation. That the generation that you're going to hand over the ministry to are men and women full of the Holy Spirit. God calls us to obey his word. Hallelujah. No wonder he makes this passionate prayer. May he turn our hearts to him to walk in obedience to him and to keep the commands, decrees, and loves that he gave his ancestors. Number four, and then I will say the last one and I finish. Number four, trust God for divine provision. And that's what we read in this passage here. He moves on and says, and may these words of mine, which I have prayed before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of the, his people Israel according to each day's need. And we have needs. We have needs. We have needs. And needs are needs, whether they are physical or social or spiritual or political or economic, problems are problems. Needs are needs. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I realize that here you are struggling with, with a lot of water. I mean, you have so many rivers. I have never gone to any place where you move just a few, few meters and you come across some water. But on the other side of the world, we are struggling because of drought. It has not rained for four seasons, four years. Animals have died. Carol have died. We have even lost some of our members. And I thank God for Convoy of Hope. Because Convoy of Hope, we work together. And also with the Assemblies of God, Kenya, we have been in the forefront giving food to many of our people. I mean, you, you move from this place, what troubles them and what troubles people here is different. But I realize one thing. Needs are needs. It doesn't matter what. If this is struggling because of lack of water, and this one is struggling because of much water, it is the same, same problem. We need the Lord to help us. Oh, praise be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Even in a personal capacity, you could be going through a social problem, a spiritual problem. It could be that problem. But this prayer opens up another aspect of our lives that we have our daily needs. And that resonates with the prayer of Jesus. When Jesus was talking about our daily provision, he was talking about the daily provision. Not monthly, not yearly, but daily needs. Because we all have needs. And he says, may the Lord provide for our own needs. Praise be to the name of Jesus. We need to have faith in God, even at this time. We need to build our faith in God. Can you imagine Solomon was a king when he was doing this prayer? He was, had written many psalms. 
many proverbs, many songs. He had a lot of wealth. He was a man who was famous, but yet he found time to be with the Lord. And as he was dedicating this, he was actually talking about the daily needs. Do we need God in our daily lives? Yes, we need God. And it's my prayer that God will meet us to the very point of our needs. In, in uh, the book of uh, Psalms 37, verse 25, David says, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. I have never seen. God has been faithful. And I want to encourage my brother, my sister. It doesn't matter because I don't know you. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is faithful. Trust in him. Have faith in him. And he will help you in your daily issues. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from him. He is the one who rewards he is the one who meets us to the very points of our needs. And Paul writes into the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19, he says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He is talking about meeting our needs. Praise be to the name of Jesus. One of the great passages within the Sermon of the Mountain is chapter 6 of the book of Matthew where Jesus talked about we being worried. Hallelujah. Now, the word worry in, in Greek has a different English word. The, that word means to be distracted. You are being distracted. So the worries of this world distracts you from the main focus. And therefore, at the end, he says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, now other things shall be added unto you. He is talking about focusing on Jesus, who is the provider. Hallelujah. And I want to enjoy you because we are living in a time when people don't believe in miracles. I want to challenge us. Miracles are still happen. Miracles still are there. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. What he did 2,000 years ago, he is able to do even today. I was sharing in the morning that in our church, I have two couples. One of the couple, the lady, hallelujah, stayed for 14 years without a child, giving birth. And I remember there was a time I was sharing a message on prevailing prayer of Hannah. And Hannah had only one prayer, one prayer. Give me a son. You move here out, give me a son. You come after 12 months, and she goes to Shiloh, and the only thing she was praying, give me a son. And, and I was, was I sharing that word, I made another call. And I said, if you are here, and you feel that God has spoken to you, and you want to believe in God, come right here. And the lady came there, and I was wondering, now what do I do? Because she was very specific. I want a son. 14 years without any child. And by God's grace, we were praying with her. But this very moment, hallelujah, I, I, we, I, I made, to, together with the people we were praying at the altar, and we said, God, we don't know how. It's against the natural law. It's against the doctor's report. But you are able. You are able to create. And the word create is the word in Hebrew, in Hebrew which means creating out of nothing. And God is able to create out of nothing. And we trusted, believed God that God is able to create and we prayed. I am a proud pastor today because I just dedicated that son just the other day. And she named that son Samuel. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Another couple, they got married in the church. Five years, no kid. Go to the hospital. The doctor's report was final. They said, the lady does not have any problem, but the man has a problem. 
he cannot. He has, doesn't have ability to bear children. And it was done. And they were advising them, could you think of adapting a child? Which is okay. I have no wrong, nothing wrong with that. But they kept on trusting the Lord. Praying to God. If God, you are able to do this, if you are able to help the other one, God, you can do that. And I remember one time we had gone for a vacation with my family. And when we came back, because we had left them in our house, when we came back, so we, somehow, God pushed me to, to pray. And I know she had prayed for many years. I know even other people are praying with her. But I became one of those people that prayed with her. And God answered the prayer. And therefore, this moment, I, I, I prayed a prayer of faith. God, against all odds, against the report of the doctor, against all the reports, you are able to create. You are able to do something. You are able to do. And we prayed. Hallelujah. The following year, God gave them a wonderful young baby girl. Praise the Lord. And they did not stay long. They got the second pregnancy and they got double twins. And right now, brethren, they, are, they have three children. And the, 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 the doctor, I, I love doctor. We have a, one of our elders is a, is, a, is a doctor. We believe in medicine. It's there in the scripture. Luke was a doctor. Hallelujah. But beyond the natural beyond our limitations, beyond what we can do and what we are not able to do. God is able. Never limit God's power. Never limit God's miracles. Never limit. God is not like us. He is able to do things that no man can do. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Allow me, Pastor, to share on one other verse. And then I speak the last one. Hallelujah. During covid God was blessing us with another plot, you know, a land, a piece of land. And Pastor Mike has come to our church. He has preached in our church. And I showed him, actually, what I'm saying. We were to buy another piece of land. And immediately I announced that you're going to do that. COVID hit. And the churches were closed, literally. Therefore, there, were, there was no physical Attendance in the church. The owner of the land had told us, by August we need to give him Kenya shillings, uh, six million. It's like sixty thousand dollars U.S. dollars. If you want this plot, the first installment is sixty thousand U.S. dollars, and we the churches were closed. And, uh, and I said, now this is serious because how are we going to get this? But let me tell you, brethren, in the month of August, we gave her 6.7 million. And down the line, we cleared all the, we raised one, um, in, in dollars, is like 150,000 US dollars during COVID. During COVID. During COVID. What I held is the promises of God. Do you know what the scripture says? In Psalms 119, verse 50, your promises encourages me. We need to believe in the promises of God. The last thing, if you're going to ignite our, ignite our passion for God, get involved in missions. Missions is the heart of God. And he says in verse 60, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. Do you know why God blesses you? Do you know why God has preserved you? Do you know why you are the way you are? It's not for any other reason. It's for the mission. It's for the work of God. After all, Jesus said, what will benefit a man if he has given the whole world and then he loses his life, his soul. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Everything should culminate in missions, should end with the missions. 
If there is something that touches the heart of God, it's missions. If you do missions, you touch the heart of God. You fulfill the great commission, and every church that has done missions, God has always blessed that nation. And I want to bless the nation of United States of America. You can find all kinds of wickedness here, but there is one thing that has restrained God from giving you wrath. One thing, one thing, one thing is about missions. Any country in the history of the church, any nation that did missions was ever preserved by God. I don't know what you're talking about because compassion, mission is right here. And therefore, God has done that. In that street of wickedness, what has restrained God from destroying is missions. It's missions. It's missions. Now, one reason, number one, pastor, why God will preserve United Nations for some time is because of missions. I teach missions. I've been a lecturer in a Bible school for many years. I have done missions. And I know in history, any people, any nation, any group, any church that has ever done missions, there is always special grace on them. There is always special blessing on them. And that mission cannot happen without us. And therefore, we need to get involved in the missions. In Genesis chapter 45, verse 7, the Bible says, But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you a remnant on earth and to save you, to save your lives a great deliverance. How do we get involved in missions? Because every member, every Christian must be a soul winner, must be a missionary, must win souls. And I said in the morning that if you are not a missionary, then you are a missionary field. If you are not doing missions, then you need someone to come and win you over to Christ again. All of us, we are missionaries in all aspects. How do we become missionaries? Number one is by going. And we bless the name of the Lord that there is a team led by pastor's wife who are coming to Kenya. Welcome so much. In the name of Jesus, it's by going. By going. Because that's the command of Jesus Christ. And the second one is by sending. You send. If you're not going to go, you send. And therefore you are sending. Praise the Lord. And the other one is you support missions. You give into missions. Any money that is given into missions touches the heart of God. For God so loved the world that he gave. It's the only thing that we can give. It's missions, brethren. It's missions. That's why we are here. And the other one is we pray for the missions. We need to pray for the missionaries. We need to pray that God will open doors in the name of Jesus. And as I finish, I want to thank you that this church is so much involved in the missions. Praise be to the name of Jesus. You have touched the heart of God. I know you could have gone through many challenges, even as a person. But let me tell you, the Lord who knows how to pay, he will pay in his due time. The Lord who knows how to lift people in the times of their needs, he will do so. You are going to save your generation because the generation will be saved because of the mission. Do you know what? Hallelujah. Even for those who are parents here and you have children who somehow have gone astray, let me tell you, missions will draw them back to the Lord. God will not let them go. Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord will always be upon you in the name of Jesus. Let us arise. We, uh, rise up. And, um, and as we come to the closure of this sermon and the service, I want to request you in the presence of the Lord. You could be here and you need a prayer. I don't know you. Hallelujah. But you could be having an issue that you would want God to intervene. Never limit God's power. Never limit God's power. I would be asking you to come in front and you're going to pray together in the name of Jesus. But James says, 
is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Is there something that is too hard for God? No. There is nothing that is too hard for God. If he did it, he can do it now. If he did it to the other person, he can do it to now. To you to now. You are there. And you're saying, there is this area that I need God's help and intervention. Just come straight to the altar in the name of Jesus. As we continue to worship the Lord in his presence. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Ramashikantara Baba Bozi. Oh, Ramashikantara Baba Bozi.